So my name is Christy. I'm the founder and CEO for version of you 2.0. And what I was really hoping to cover with you today was the understanding that there are major gaps in the weight loss industry. And in understanding that there are major gaps in the weight loss industry, my intentions were to really to help you to overcome any residual negative emotional attachments, if you will, to any past attempts that you had in trying to lose weight, okay? So this is not a pitch. This is just simply a place where you can have some aha moments so you can really understand those gaps in the weight loss industry so that you can find better, okay? Once you understand and know more, then you can then do better, right? We know that. So once you realize that the gaps that exist, then if ever you do decide that you're looking to lose weight and you want to keep it off permanently, you'll realize that there are other opportunities out there for you and what you should be looking for. So questions for you to begin. First of all, I'm just going to actually check to make sure I'm here with you. Uh, yes, fantastic. So I do have my... Um, trusty tablet beside me. So if you end up writing questions, I'll have to refresh, but I will see them. Otherwise, you can always reach me at christy at versionofyou2.com and I'll put that information in there as well. Okay, so do you feel like you eat healthily and exercise but still struggle with permanent weight loss? That was me, okay? Have you successfully lost weight in the past but then gained it all back? And possibly even in excess of what you had to lose in the first place. That was also me. <laughs> so if you said yes to either or both of these, then you're in the right place, okay? And I won't take up too much of your time today, I promise. But I wanted to share with you as much as I possibly could so that um, you could come away with these revelations, these insights, these aha, now I get it kind of moments, okay? But if you've got questions, then please do not hesitate to reach out. So I'm going to be sharing some awful statistics with you. I'm not going to lie, okay? It's, it's, they're terrible, but extremely impactful. So I'm going to share them with you anyways. So if you are not prepared, then I want you to walk away because I don't want to ruin your day, okay? But if you're prepared to really kind of understand what's been going on behind the scenes, then pay very close attention. So I am going to ask you to buckle up and take notes because I want you to come away with this better understanding so you can release yourself of any of that residual shame, guilt, et cetera, from the weight loss, weight loss, weight loss, weight gain roller coaster ride. So just a quick story about me. My journey started at the age of nine and it started at the age of nine because I had somebody come up to me and call me chubby while I was wearing a bathing suit <laughs> playing by the pool. And it was a close family member. So it was somebody that I respected and that I looked up to, right? And it was also an authority figure. So as I'm sure you can imagine, that kind of spiraled into something bigger. But at that point or before that point, until I was told that I was chubby at the age of nine, I didn't have an opinion of my body one way or the other. My body belonged to me. And I most certainly didn't realize that the look of my body affected anybody else until that moment at least that was the perception that I moved forward with so as I grew up I ended up unconsciously giving away control of how I should feel about my body and I really relied on that external validation and I looked to sources to be able to model how I should look because clearly you know I was told I was chubby, chubby and I didn't think I was I didn't realize it affected other people's opinions of me. And therefore, if people really had that opinion of me and I didn't know it, then my opinion of myself wasn't good enough. And I had to look to others to validate whether or not I was pretty enough. And that was the spiral effect. And that really has led to this passion of me being in this industry for the past 28 years, but really only recognizing within these last couple couple of years now that there is another way you know that we don't fit into the different templates and molds that while the ketogenic diet or intermittent fast may be good diets especially on paper when you look at the food science 
they're not designed for all of us, but there is an option for all of us. And so, you know, I really wanted to help to communicate what was missing in the diet industry so you can stop wasting your money and your time and investing all of your hope and emotions in something that inevitably is going to fail you. So I want you to understand that our bodies are unique from one another. You know, you may have a sister, you may have a mother, you may have all decided to, uh, even with a best friend, decided to get into the same workout routine or get into the same diet routine. But you need to understand that you're unique to you. They are unique to themselves. And the things that used to work for us, even so far as to just, or, or as recently as a week ago, <laughs> may not even work anymore, okay? And my clients tell me all the time, that they feel insecure in the bedroom with their partner, that they feel insecure wearing a bathing suit, that they feel insecure at a social gathering. Can you hear the trending thoughts and feelings here? That they feel insecure having their picture taken or being around other moms that just seem to have their shit together, right? So I work with women uh, to help them achieve weight loss. So, they had been successful, at least most of them had been successful in achieving weight loss in the past, but not in keeping it off. And there lied kind of that plummeting emotional spiral of self-loathing and, you know, disgust with their body, if you will. So if you resonate with any of this, then I need you to hear me and I need you to listen very closely. With all of the diet plans, exercise prescriptions, and medications on the market today, none of these health solutions speak to your unique needs. You see, we all have our own unique hormone blueprint. You and I could both decide to get up and work out and we're accountability partners. So we get up, we work out at six o'clock in the morning, we do this high intensity interval training session, we try and burn as many calories as we can so that for the rest of the day we are setting ourselves up for success. And by three o'clock in the afternoon, you've made amazing healthy choices. And by three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm found in some fetal position in the corner of the room having trouble self-regulating. And that is because that type of high intensity exercise at that time of the morning does not work for my unique hormone blueprint. And it took me a really long time to realize that not getting out of bed to do the early morning workout didn't make me lazy. Okay, does that resonate with you at all? So here's my claim. And one of the reasons why the New York City Journal awarded me as one of the top 30 disruptors for 2021 and top 30 women life coaches of 2022, and that was from Disruptor Magazine. Following a diet plan or exercise regime may be causing you to gain weight instead of losing it. Let me say that again. Following a diet plan or exercise regime may be causing you to gain weight instead of losing it. So, let me put my money where my mouth is, okay? Do you remember the show, The Biggest Loser? Yeah? Unfortunately, 80% of them ended up gaining the weight back. So here's the study. A study conducted by the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive Kidney Diseases, led by physiologist Kevin Hall, revealed that the reason those candidates from The Biggest Loser experienced what's called the weight rebound effect, when you've lost the weight and gained it back, sometimes even in excess, was that their metabolism had slowed as a result of having been on the show. So think about that for a moment. These candidates were monitored by medical professionals every single day. They were provided healthy food options prepared by chefs, <laughs> who always said that if they made it a lot of money that they would hire a chef to make their food, right? Well, these candidates had their food provided by chefs. They were supplied with exercise prescription by no other than Jillian Michaels. And these people whom the researchers followed for six years post-show suffered from slower metabolisms. Their metabolisms had slowed because weight loss is more than just calories in and calories out. So think about that for a second. You have everything. These candidates had everything at their disposal. They lost the weight, but 80% of them gained the weight back. It feels like permanent weight loss is fleeting. It's like 
it's a pipe dream. It's a dream. It's not reality when in fact it can be reality. But here's some more statistics for you because I really need you to understand the weight loss industry as a whole and the this epidemic that we have around obesity. So according to Stats Canada, I live in Canada, but I do have the US stats coming up here as well. According to Stats Canada, an estimated one in five adult Canadians is currently considered obese. And the American Obesity Association suggests that by 2025, 50% of Americans will be obese, and by 2030, it will have risen to 60%. And with COVID, about 60% of the deaths up until January 12th, 2021, for the study that I was following, which was concluded at that time, was attributed to obesity. And in the last 50 years, governments have created different recommendations for weight loss, up to 5,000 different recommendations with regards to weight loss, proven unsuccessful because we are in an obesity epidemic. And the statistics in terms of the global marketplace, in terms of the financials, they're expected to rise from $254.9 billion in the weight loss industry from 2021 to $377.3 billion by 2026. So despite a lot of the recommendations, the 5,000 different government-based recommendations proving not to work, despite that the weight loss industry you know, I'm going to say a 95% failure rate, but we know at least 80% of the candidates on The Biggest Loser, when they had everything provided to them, uh, still ended up gaining the weight back. The weight loss industry is still making billions of dollars, not millions of dollars, billions of dollars. Okay. And so what's really interesting here is that the reason behind these astounding statistics is the high failure rate. And, and there is no other option. Like you even go to your doctor to seek medical help. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear that. There's something going on outside in my front yard. Um, but despite, despite seeking medical help, we still have our medical professionals recommending ketogenic diets or intermittent fasting and are recommending these diets that are just universal general templates, if you will, that aren't personalized. And diet plans really fail to teach their clients why, you know, why are you overeating? Why do you have this current health uh, situation or status? Like, why are you in the predicament that you are in right now? Because it's not just the action of overeating, there's underlying stuff that needs to be addressed. And really understanding the self-sabotaging behaviors. How many of you have ever gotten onto a diet and then you started to see success? And you justified not doing it anymore for whatever reason. It seemed like a good idea at the time, <laughs> but like three months later, you look back and you're like, had I just stuck to the plan, I probably would be at the goal that I wish I was at right now, right? Now, diet plans fail to uproot the issue underneath the weight gain. And if you don't understand the why behind your current health status, then how are you supposed to deal with life, Right? you have a high probability of going back to any of those old negative coping mechanisms or behaviors that were unhealthy. So do you, do you understand this? Is this making sense to you? That you need to, under, un, you need to address your underlying issues so that any time you're stressed out, emotionally triggered, um, you know, you feel vulnerable and uncomfortable with being vulnerable, you feel sad and anxious that you don't automatically default to all of the old behaviors, that instead you've come up with new strategies and an understanding on how to deal with life's ebbs and flows so that you can maintain permanent weight loss. Now, diet plans also fail to help clients uncover their unique beliefs about the relationships with themselves. So here's the other portion to this, and there's really three key portions, and the third one, um, has to do with your hormones, but you know, we need to understand how to deal with our sabotaging behaviors. We also need to understand the storyline that we've come up with for ourselves. So oftentimes we'll put everybody else's needs in front of our own and we find it very hard to make ourselves a priority when it comes to consistency in our health. Okay. It's like we have to give all of us, everybody else, but really it's about giving the best of us 
to everybody else. And the only way that we can give the best of us is if we learn to take care of ourselves and to be able to do that comfortably where we can say no to taking on other um, responsibilities and saying yes to ourselves, creating those boundaries. So when I look at those statistics that I showed you about earlier, all I see is money being brought into this weight loss industry where there's all of these holes and all of these holes are where everybody seems to be falling through, but the weight loss industry doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. So when you're looking for a weight loss plan, you want to be able to address, you want the plan to be able to address your personality traits, you know, your sabotaging behaviors, that con artist brain is what I call it, where you start to justify and rationalize not meal prepping, <laughs> you know, or like skipping a day at the gym or whatever that rationalization is, where you can still understand what's going on there and overcome it so that you don't give into it. Okay. You need to be able to understand your unique hormone blueprint, which is what we talked about at the beginning, recognizing that what your body needs is truly distinct and unique to you. And you also need to be able to uncover any of those storylines, old beliefs. When we're growing up as kids, we hear our parents say stuff, but we interpret a lot of that and it becomes distorted truths. So it's really important that you understand some of your patterns in terms of your thought patterns are related to some of those distorted truths. And if you better understood the true meaning or, or what your experiences were really meant to look like for you, it would be much easier for you to advocate for yourself. Okay. And those are the three areas within the weight loss industry that's missing. So the only thing that I wanted to leave you with is that today was all about just getting you to appreciate that you are so beautifully unique. And if you understand what it is that I'm saying to you, then let's get rid of any of that stored emotional trauma that you have in your body. So I've got three free guides, experiential exercises, refl reflective exercises that I'm willing to give you as part of just you watching this, if it resonated with you, of course. The first one is really just understanding how you came up with this storyline in your head. Like for me, when I did this work, I, I finally recognized that it started at nine years old and moved from there. But once I understood where it came from, it was easier for me to start to take my power back, as I'm sure you've heard before. The second um, activity really has you releasing that shame and guilt. And then the third activity is about writing your own story. Writing your own story from your perspective, knowing that you're in control of your thoughts and feelings and the experiences that you want to have and what your actions are going to be moving forward when it comes to embracing your unique body. So if that's of interest to you, then I want you just to go ahead and comment, um, I need this gift, and I will go ahead and share that with you. Anyway, I hope that this was of value to you. Again, my name is Christy from Version of You 2.0, and you can reach out to me at Christy at Version of You 2, the number 2.com. Have yourself a great rest of your day, and I will go ahead and answer any questions that you may have. Take care of yourself. Bye, everybody.